What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. Amir Amy. And this week on The Great Debaters, man, Raps Elite, EPMD. All right, Amir, so we're back here on The Great Debaters. As always, Soren Baker, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. We appreciate your support and getting us this far. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Button's right down there. If you haven't already, please join. The button's right next to that. That enables me to throw a little extra love and support to the good people here at Unique Access Entertainment that help make the channel what it is. And we appreciate your support and goodness this far. Now today, Amir, EPMD, one of our both favorite groups, one of the best rap groups of all time. The legacy is astounding, phenomenal, effervescent, magnificent, all kinds of things. Now, for this album, man, Business Never Personal, fourth album 1992 just amazing amazing track record that epmd had coming into this album and business never personal just keeps that going so for you amir what were your thoughts getting into this project and how you got into it well i was like epmd already has a solid track record so far let's see if they can keep it up and of course they do um really 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 awesome rap group and Let's go ahead and get into one of my picks. Uh, first pick right here is is the track right here. I gotta I gotta pull up the single for it. We got Headbanger from uh, the album, and one of the singles also with features on it. And we have K Solo and Redman feature on this. Soren and I just talked about K Solo. Tell the world my name. So you can hit that link up there. Um, but man, it's just like. Who's got the best verse on this damn song? It's like every time someone goes like, I think that person did better than the other one. But then I have to rewind it to see if they actually did better. It's like it's one of those really, really, really strong songs. And just, man, I love this because it's showing kind of, for one, it's keeping everything kind of in-house. This, These are the artists that you're trying to build um, and, you know, tell the world's my name and come out two years prior um red man's what the album also came out in 1992 so to see these people on the feature list to hear them rap it's gonna put more money in everyone's pockets so that's just really awesome and uh man so everyone just goes actually just really hard on this track it's one of the hardest songs on the album easily if not Absolutely. the hardest Absolutely. um <laughs> pmd excellent rhymes eric sermon does great k solo i mean in, in comparison of what he was doing on tell the world my name he was going really 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 hard it's like they're kind of like two different people because he may only go this hard maybe on one song on tell the world my name like it's close to this and then red man i mean red man's verse it's like every time you heard red man too it's like you're like when's this guy solo dropping yeah you know what i mean and it, every time man when he has that line i go raw raw like i have cerebral palsy i'm just like dude this is so funny and then he also quoted that same line on his own album later i think it was on the song can't wait but dude everyone has an excellent verse the beat is banging and then you also just have like the course where they're just saying the head banger, the head banger, <laughs> and it's just like so simple, but for some reason it just really works. Um, it's just an incredible song by four awesome rappers, and the production is off the hook. That's my first pick. Head banger is also one of my picks. Uh, one of my favorite songs on the album. Clearly, also one of my favorite EPMD songs. Also one of my favorite Red Man guest appearances. Also one of my favorite K Solo guest appearances. Yep. And <clears throat> I mean, I think I like the Lions of Mirror reference, but I think one of my other ones from Red Man is what you see is what you get and what you're seeing is getting your ass kicked. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it just it just nonstop uh A list genius on this song. Of every level. And I think, too, you know, thankfully, EPMD's production is always so stellar. And this song is no exception. But I think the thing that uh, the reason I'm bringing up the production on the song is that sometimes I think as we're getting into this, starting to be a little bit into the mid 1990s, when they do these posse songs, I think because of the firepower and the star power that's on these songs, some of the beats started to me not being always as great but i thought the headbanger beat was still 
like primo uh, just amazing and i was just glad that epmd realized that hey man we got to keep you know firing at full capacity and full power every single time and i think headbanger did that so that's my first pick Amir, what's your second pick on business never personal Second pick is going to go ahead and be um, the B-side, actually, the headbanger. And that is Scratch, Bring It Back, Part 2, Mike Doc. Amazing, 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 amazing. So we have Eric Sermon with the first verse. And this is something that I just, uh, I love so much in music when they do this. Um, And I don't know when it started to become, like, a little more normal, but when beats switch in the middle of the song or some way through the song or, you know, I I love that. And you hear that on this song, you hear Eric Sharma with a verse. And then <laughs> when you hear uh, the second verse come in with Parrish and you hear that come in, it's just like, where did that beat come from? That is just incredible. And I remember when I first heard it, um, I... I was just listening, I don't know, if, it was the first time I heard it in the car, I remember, actually, when I was listening, and then when the beat switched, I was like, I didn't change the volume on on the car, and I'm like, dude, it just gets so much louder and harder, and just, it's just incredible, and <clears throat> just like Headbanger, you literally just start nodding your head, it's <laughs> that damn good, and Paris Smith goes hard on it, and then, man, DJ Scratch doing what he does best i mean just listen to the end of that song i was telling soren i'm like dude they needed to make the song just a minute longer so we can hear dj scratch do his thing a little bit more on the dj tip i mean he is just killing it and these are things it's kind of like i try not to compare like new rap to old rap a lot of the times but also when you think about it i mean who's really doing stuff like that anymore no one's really doing that actually djing on a song um and that's especially not long that, lost not art. as well <laughs> and not that good either so you know you go to live shows now you don't see djs anymore you just see like the macbook the, the laptop whatever and not to say there's anything wrong with that per se but you you just wonder what would happen if you put up some turntables and yeah. gave them a, a crate of records and like i said not to say these things are bad but there's definitely some art lost and DJ Scratch, definitely one of the originals and one of the greats. And big shout out to him because he produced a freaking incredible song. And the verses are awesome. But I think this song really, uh, DJ Scratch is carrying the load on this as the song title would imply. Amazing song. That's my second pick. Scratch Bring It Back is also one of my picks. Man, DJ Scratch, who I've interviewed multiple times on Unique Access. There's a link to one of the installments. Please watch that. Is amazing, uh, creative force, but this song may be my favorite song on the album. But on top of that, like Amir was saying with the Parish, when he comes in on the second verse, I remember hearing it and I didn't know if it was Parish because his voice and his style is that so too. different. And I was like, wait a minute, is this Parish? Are they impersonating Parish? What is going on? And then they talk to him, and then when the beat flips, he flips too so i remember just hearing that and i was like man epmd man they just they're literally on a different level they're doing stuff production wise creatively that's so imaginative and that's so innovative and stylistically distinctive that that's why they're epmd that's why these first four albums went gold because they were just killing the game man and and they you know as we see with Headbanger and coming at you, they brought in K-Solo, they brought in Redman, they brought in DJ Scratch, they brought in Das FX. So they had such, such, such powerful artists that they were ushering in and shepherding, and it's on full display on Business Never Personal. And DJ Scratch, I think, I he, DJ Aladdin and DJ Jazzy Jeff, I all saw during their prime peaks, per se, those are my top three I've seen in person during uh, Jazzy Jeff, I sh- uh, restate Aladdin and, and Scratch are the two I saw in the normal prime of their career. I didn't see Jeff till later, so I can't evaluate. And he wasn't doing all the turntable trick stuff like I imagine he would have been had I seen him more in the his golden era uh, back in the day. But 
I will say this. Scratch at least is jaw-droppingly brilliant as a performer. And I think Scratch Bring It Back is uh, one of the best examples of that on record that we have. So definitely my second pick. So Amir, as we're getting into the third pick, what is it for Business Never Personal? Third pick... So it's a tough one. Uh, you you had mentioned Daz Effects earlier, and I'm like, oh, coming at you is really close to being in my top three. It's not going to edge it out. What is going to edge it out is this trifecta I got right here, and that is crossover. <laughs> As you can see, I clearly like the song. A lot of people like the song, um, and it's a great one. So this is my third pick, another single from the group, and also, ironically, is if not their best charting song is like top three charting songs for a song that's like talking about people just trying to get large and switching up their styles just to get radio play they thankfully did get radio play with this one and music video and everything so also i love the cover this is just an awesome it's cover. it's a great cover epmd's logo and and all their covers album covers are amazing you can see the album behind us love this cover um and just their logo how they switch up the colors and all that is just super dope but that's besides the point crossover love the beat on this it's super hard i remember the first time i heard it i wasn't as crazy about like the chorus the chorus kind of uh turned me off a little bit but then as i listened to it a few more times like oh no i, I like it and the beat is just super hard um excellent stuff and also you know a message that we had seen quite a bit in hip-hop a little bit uh, with certain artists getting radio play, and then some rappers had a sour taste in their mouth. We'd heard it like with Ice Cube on True to the Game as well, among other rappers. Um, so to hear them take their approach on it was cool. Excellent song, really like the sample and the beat. And then one thing I also want to notice on Crossover, and this is something that I just don't understand, they have the track on here, Brothers from Brentwood, Long Island, mm. is the B-side unavailable on the album. But when you actually look at the album, there's only 11 tracks, and it, I don't even know if it scratches the 40-minute mark. It could be wrong there, but... I think it's less than 40 minutes. Too. So, give or take, I mean, on a CD, you can fit around 80 minutes. So, why did they not include the song on the album? I don't know. Someone's got to tell my that guess, one. My guess, I mean, I don't know <clears throat> the answer, but my guess would be they just did it after they had to turn the album in. Mm. But so they were able to put it on the single, but even that kind of doesn't make sense, but maybe. I don't know. Or they couldn't clear this. The sample might not have got cleared in time. Not fair. But who knows? But either way, if you haven't heard Brothers from Brentwood, Long Island, go ahead and check that out because it's on the crossover single. But that's my last pick. Crossover is not my third pick, although I like it. It's just sometimes, as we've talked about, and mainly when it comes to Ice Cube, when the first song is great, that's what I got to ride with in Boondocks. Oh, Boondocks. Man, that song, I just remember hearing that and uh, scratching on there, the energy, the excitement, and just, you know, from business as usual back to business never personal i was like i'd been waiting to hear it because business as usual as the third album was so excellent and <laughs> when boondocks came i was just like wow they're just it's just amazing it's so amazing and it's more of the feel of the production of course lyrically and stylistically eric and Parrish are are brilliant rappers but just the feel and the energy and the excitement that I heard every time I hear Boondocks, I just feel that. And it just resonates with me. Uh, and even like in the very beginning of the song and Parrish, and they bring in the slow down from Edie Brickell, which Brand Nubian had used on their slow down. Like I was just like, man, here we go. The production, the style, the innovation, the different things they're bringing in. I just... I was mesmerized and hooked right out the gate. So Boondocks, probably not most people's pick, probably not one of the more popular songs, even on the album cut side of things. But for me, there's just too much energy, too much excitement, too much innovation. And then, and then of course, like I always like the break beats, as I've talked about many times, they got a great, great use of one on there too. And scratching is just 
top to bottom, front to back, side to side, Boondocks is amazing to me. Any thoughts on that before we wrap up in there? Dude, that's a that's a great song. But when you're talking about uh, business as usual's first track, I'm mad is woo. That might be the the best first song they put on any album, man. That that's amazing. That song's incredible. I mean, that's uh, that beat is nuts too. So what you saying though? Uh, oh, was that track one? Unfinished business. Oh, then, no, that's the best one. Never mind. So I take yeah. it back. That's the best song. Yeah, I mean they. That's the thing. They start off their albums yeah, you're like. Right. They start off their albums. Really, all their songs are so good, but when you've got Ooh. "So What You Saying" as the first no, song, which the is best. probably my favorite EPMD that's song, I must song. say, no, it's, it's uh, song. you know, "Scratch Bring It Back" is one of my favorites, but I think "So What You Saying" is my favorite. Um, but all that to be said, Boondocks, I'm mad. So what you saying? Like, look at those three in particular. <laughs> oh my god! Like, just, just amazing, amazing, amazing material. And this is, you know, why I think EPMD is one of the best rock groups ever, one of the most influential, one of the most significant, et cetera, et cetera. So, gotta go. Anytime we can uh, shout out, appreciate, and make EPMD videos, you gotta do it. But anyway, I'm Soren Baker. You got my three picks. Me or Amy. Please hit us down there in that comment section. And I did, even though they're not gangster rappers, I did mention EPMD and discuss them in my book, The History of Gangster Rap, because of the funk influence and breaking down that even though this West Coast is synonymous with the funk and the Parliament and George Clinton and all that and this Roger Zapp, EPMD back in the early, I mean, in the mid to late 1980s, before it became synonymous with the West Coast, EPMD on Strictly Business in particular was doing it too. So it wasn't that this was unique to the West Coast or unique to gangster rap. EPMD was doing that, and that's why my book, The History of Gangster Rap, please buy a copy. It's available as a hard copy print book, or you can get the audio version. But bottom line is EPMD was doing that at the same time before, around the same time, etc., as Dre with what he was doing with NWA in particular, which then became, uh, as we get into G-Funk with Above the Law and NWA and Snoop and Chronic and all that stuff, but EPMD was doing it right there too. So it's not like this is something that's distinctive to the West Coast because it's not. But I, I say all that to say EPMD is brilliant. I'm so glad every time we get to talk about them. I love them. And thank you, Eric Parrish, Scratch, Charlie Murata, Redman, K Solo, Das Effects, everybody that made this album so amazing. So that's my three picks. You guys got a mirror. Hit us in the comments section. Thank you for watching and supporting Unique Access. Please subscribe. Please join if you haven't already. And we'll catch you next time on The Great Debaters. In the beginning, hip-hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence thanks to gangster rap. Out of Crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. Hip-hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.